In this lesson, we're going to study one last property of our polynomial function from the previous lesson. Um, and in this question, we're going to consider sort of the long-term behavior of the stock. So make sure you've read this question if you haven't already. And the key word here is long-term, right? So we're looking to retire. Um, you're probably like 16, 17 right now. So we're looking at some, some years, right? So really what we care about is what happens to the graph as x gets very large, right? And we have this language from our study of limits of x approaching infinity. So that's really what we care about here. And notice, I would argue that this is a bad stock for my retirement portfolio based on my model because as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And this is one of those situations where it's really important that you make some meaning out of the notation. So definitely we want to write it down in words and say it out loud if you're in a spot where you can say it out loud a couple of times that will help you understand this notation as well. But the translation of it is as x gets bigger, the y values are decreasing forever, right? So the overall trend at the end of the graph as x approaches infinity is that the y values are going down. And this idea is called the end behavior of the graph. So the end behavior of this graph is as x goes to infinity, y, uh, f of x goes to negative infinity. And this particularly is the right end behavior. We'll talk a little bit about the left end behavior here in a second. Before that, however, we're going to make a little table of just familiar functions. So Take a look at h of x, g of x, k of x, and m of x. These are all functions we're somewhat familiar with at this point in our careers already. h of x is a parabola, and it is a happy parabola. g of x with the negative in front is a sad parabola. And then k of x, x cubed is kind of that kind of swoopy shaped. And then negative x cubed, that's a reflection. So same shape, but sort of the opposite direction, right? And you're... Your sketches do not have to be perfect. Mine are certainly far from perfect here. Um, but they're going to help us investigate the end behavior and the notation we use to describe it. For my parabola, my end behavior is that as x goes to infinity, h of x goes to infinity. So this time we're saying it goes up forever. And let's make a note of what we're talking about. This specifically refers to the right end behavior in this case. My left end behavior is going to be what happens on the other side of the graph, and that side is x approaching, those would be negative values, so negative infinity. h of x also, in this case, approaches infinity. So this says as we go to the left, the y values are increasing, and that's my left end behavior. So what we're about to do is go ahead and write down the end behavior of our other three familiar functions here, and I think for a lot of you, you could go through and write them down on your own based on this example that I just gave you. Um, so feel free to pause right now. Um, try to write those down probably in pencil, right? And then skip ahead in the video to check your work. Or if you'd prefer to do them together, you can continue to watch me. Both are good options for you, so choose whichever you think is going to work best for you. For my sad parabola, as x goes to infinity, uh, my sad parabola's name now is g of x goes to negative infinity, and that's my right end behavior. My left end behavior is as x goes to negative infinity, g of x goes to infinity, so that's that side. And then now for my cubic function k of x, we will say as x goes to infinity, so that's the right side of the graph, k of x goes to infinity, so that is up here. And then my left end behavior as x goes to negative infinity, k of x also goes to negative infinity. And then my last one here, m of x, my right end behavior is here as x goes to infinity, m of x goes to negative infinity. And my left end behavior is the opposite, so as x goes to negative infinity, m of x goes to infinity. Okay, so there's the end behavior of my four graphs. So hopefully we're noticing a pattern here. Um, before we move on, 
and sort of investigate that pattern a little bit. I just want to note that we have a different notation for talking about these. And you won't use this necessarily in the delta math, but you will use this um, throughout the module. And that is for limit notation. And I think it's a little bit easier to write. Um, so I'm going to take a second to rewrite all of these in limit notation. So my limit of h of x as x goes to infinity, and this is going to be awfully similar, is infinity. That's my right end behavior. So this says the same thing, right? This says that as my function, my x values approach infinity, the y values approach infinity. That's exactly what I'm saying here. And I can do my left end behavior exactly like that. So my left end behavior is going to be a limit to negative infinity of h of x is equal to, in this case, it was also a positive infinity. So notice this is my x values, this is my y values down here. Don't get those mixed up. This is an excellent opportunity to just practice notation we're still getting familiar with in this class. Um, so I would highly encourage you to pause the video before we go any further and just try some of these on your own. So this one again says as x approaches positive infinity, the y values approach negative infinity. Um, so finish the other five maybe on your own before you continue to watch. So there's our end behavior and limit notation for all of these graphs. Uh, make sure you double check that all the signs are correct. That's the most important part here. So this one's infinity, negative infinity, negative infinity, infinity here. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that these notations mean the exact same thing. And as we go on our math career, we're going to see more and more of this limit notation and less of this notation up here. Okay, we're going to look at some delta math problems here. And we have these big long functions. I'm going to do them graphically, and then we'll consider whether there's a pattern that we see. So like graphing these in your calculator is not the best way to do these at all. But by the end of the video, we're going to have a rule that makes these a lot easier. Okay, I went and typed this whole messy thing in there, and I picked a window that's going to allow us to see what's going on. Notice this window is pretty crazy for my Ys. Um, the way that I got that is I did zoom and did zoom fit, and my calculator kind of picked those for me. So when I look at the graph, we see that it goes up and up and up forever on both sides. So the end behavior is this, is as x goes to infinity, this is called f of x goes to infinity, and then as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to infinity. So this says it goes up on both sides, the right side and the left side. And then my second one, I will graph this one as well. Before I do that, though, I want to note that this one, the biggest exponent that we see is x to the sixth. This one, the biggest exponent that we see is x to the fifth. And that coefficient is negative, whereas this was positive up here. Um, so I'm expecting to get some type of different shape here. Okay, so again, I typed her in. I messed with the window settings. And as I take a look at the graph, I see that my end behavior is the following, right? As x goes to infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity, and x goes to negative infinity gives f of x goes to infinity. Now, is there a pattern we could have used the, for these? The answer is yes. So this rule, if we look back at our original examples, well, let's remind ourselves what we're doing here first. It has to do with these leading coefficients, right? So biggest exponents here. So if I have a positive, even exponent, notice the end behavior of that example, example one, matched our x squared. And if I have a negative, odd exponent, for example, two, notice that matched m of x. So that is kind of the shortcut we can use. So we never actually have to graph these to figure out the end behavior. So the shortcut is the following. All polynomials with an odd degree behave like our cubic functions. All polynomials with an even degree behave like quadratic functions. So what I mean by that is that anytime we're looking at the end behavior of a polynomial, we are just going to match them up to one of our four examples here. They're always going to be similar based on the sign positive or negative and whether this exponent is even or odd. So we'll add the very last thing we'll add to our little rule here is that the sign of that leading coefficient matters. 
So it controls where you have a happy parabola or a sad parabola, for example.